Thank you for the, your participation. Today we are going to have a look at the Nasadiya Sutta, mm. which is a, a, a Vedic hymn from the Rig Veda, specifically Tan Mandala and the, the uh, Sutta number 129. Uh, it speaks about the creation. I don't like the the, <laughs> the term mythology because uh, usually mythology is used as um, you know in, in, is is, is uh, <laughs> carrying a, a, a negative semantic luggage. If we try to call mythology the description of the creation in the Bible, they are going to get angry. <laughs> because for them, their uh, exact the same is uh, theology. Okay, so I am claiming the legitimate use of the definition theology also for the Nasadiya Sutta. Okay. So, you wanted to say something before we start to yeah. reading it? Uh, yeah, like uh, here, in the end it says that, uh, like, you know, it's un uncertain. Nobody knows what happened, how uh -huh. this all started. And in Puranas, we have, okay, description of, okay, this happened, then this happened, then this happened. Uh, so, in parallel, let's we'll yeah. understand this and then we'll compare it with Puranas. And that too, in different Puranas, different somewhere. It no, says actually, that okay, actually, everything happened. It is there is no contradiction. Mm -hmm. uh, because the the Puranas uh, speak about uh, the development of the creation, not the before the creation. Because before the creation there was no manifestation. So, we can say it was not non-existent, but it was also not existent. <laughs> as as uh, Krishna Chaitanya would say, it says, Achidya Veda Veda Tattva. You know, simultaneously and inconceivably uh, same and different. So, at the same time, it was manifested and non-manifested. It was existent, but non-existent. Uh, so the, this is the, the way it is, uh, it is called Nasadiya Sutta. Nasadiya means uh, which is related to the not non-existence. Asat. Na asat. So, yeah, I, I, I was read, I read it before, now I just, now I have the look of it, uh, at it, so we can, uh, we can examine it. But maybe first we can give a little bit of explanation of the creation uh, description in the Puranas, specifically uh, I am more familiar with the Bhagavata Purana, which is the most famous of the various Puranas. And uh, the, the Bhagavata Purana says that there are two stages of creation. The first uh, creation, the first stage of creation, is when the non-manifested Narayana started to manifest. This is the entire core of the understanding of transcendence because this is also what Krishna is showing to Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is showing the universal form and uh, the very important 
passage that I, I um, consider, you know, very uh, central to the to the issue, says that Krishna is showing the Vishwarupa to Arjuna in one point, in one single place, one single point. This is what we can call the Bindu. Uh, in geometry, a point has no dimension. In theology, a point is both infinitesimal and inf infinite. This is why the descriptions of the Vedic literature said that God is smaller than the smallest and bigger than the biggest. What does that mean? It means that is it you know un infinitely small as a point. When we say that the point in geometry has no dimensions, means it's the smallest. But at the same time, that point contains the entire existence, but non-manifested in a non-manifested state. So it is not non-existent. It is actually existent, but it is not manifested. Is that clearer? Yeah. I know it's difficult. I know. Mm -hmm, difficult. <laughs> it's difficult because we are, you know, used to measuring things in space, time, and individuality. Individuality means that each entity has a beginning and an end. But Krishna Bhagavad Gita, when he's showing the Viratrupa, it says there is no beginning and no end. This is a definition with, you know, of the infinite. But the infinite is also infinitesimal. And if we don't understand this point, in Asadiya Sutta is not going to make a lot of sense to us. You know, we become confused. But let's see let's see the text. This is the Rig Veda. Nasa dasin nasa dasit. Tadanim nasid rajano vyoma paroyat. Kim avariva kuha kasya sarmanam bha kimasid gahanam gabhiram. Nas, na asad, asin. There was no not existence. You know, there was not non existence. No sad asit. And at the same time, there was no existence. Tadanim. Like that. Nasid. Raja no vyama paroyat. Uh, say, uh, there was no Erden, no the heavens beyond it. Vyoma is the space. Is the, yeah, Rajo, Rajo, no. Vyoma, Paro, yeah. Paravyoma. The Paravyoma is a, <coughs> a definition of the spiritual world, the spiritual space. Kim Avariva. Kuhakasya Sarmanam Bhakim Asid Gahanam Gabhiram. Who co what covered it? Where was it? In whose keeping was there than the cosmic water? In death unfathomed Gahanam Gabhiram of uh, immeasurable depth. Now, we know that this is the Karana Udaka, which is the ocean of the causes where Mahavishnu manifests to start the material universes. This is the beginning of all creations. 
This Karanadaka is also called Mahatattva or Viraj. It's not exactly water. But you know that, for example, um, you know, the, the uh, mother goddess is called Rupa because she is giving form to everything. She is the form of everything. You know, that is in the Devi Mahatmya. You know, Sarva Rupa Eka Hi Hamba, Eka Tu Hamba. You know, Mother Goddess is all the forms. So, all the forms are made of the Mother Goddess. Mother Goddess is the Amba. 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 Mother is the water. The water is the, um, uh, the symbol of existence. In, on our planet, in our dimension, we have a very strong experience of water. Everything around us has water. Everything is made of water. Our body is made by 70% of water. Water is an overwhelming element that gives the shape. So these waters that are immeasurable, are deep, you know, the, the depth of these waters cannot be measured. Very deep, infinitely, unlimitedly deep. So what covered it, these waters? There was no air, there were no planets. The Mahatattva is just like an ocean. It's the ocean of the, but all the material elements. I don't know, uh, is that clear? Can, that, can, can, you, can you follow? Mm. Almost. Yeah, trying Almost. to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to, exactly. Yeah, we all we are all trying. We are all trying. But you know, you, you know when when uh, Vishnu is called Achintya and Adokshaja, that means <laughs> that we cannot understand through the material mind, material intellect. We need to experience it. So we are now talking theory, you know. But unless you have the direct experience, it's very difficult to understand it. The, uh, there was no nothingness. It means everything was there, but it was not manifested, not existence. So everything was there, but not manifested. Let's make a very simple example. You know, you want to build a house. The house is in your head, in your mind. But you have not built it yet. So we cannot say that the house does not exist. It's not that there is nothing in your mind. There is a complete plan for your house. Or let's say maybe not in your mind we can make the you know the, the, the blueprint or the, the design schematics. Okay. Those are not the manifested house. But we cannot say there is nothing. Because all the plants are there, but they're not manifested. They're not the, the house yet. You understand? So, so there was not nothingness. Nothingness. There was no existence, but not nothingness. Something was there. What is that something? It is the bindu. The entire existence in a non-manifested state. 
Before the creation of course there was no air. There were no planets, of course. Nothing was manifested. The only thing that existed was the Mahatattva, the water, the, the water of existence, and the mother goddess. Now, I don't know if you are familiar with the Christian Bible. No. Okay. okay. Now, the, especially the Gospel of John copied this part. <laughs> the Dasa Dia Sutta is very famous. Yeah. And uh, both the Genesis and the beginning of the Gospel of John uh, have copied from this, this uh, Sutta. Why? Because both the, uh, the, the Bible and the, uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament especially, the, the, the one written by, by so-called John, were written uh, in uh, Alexandria of Egypt. That was in about uh, two, three hundred uh, uh, before the present era. And Alexandria of Egypt was the center of the Hellenistic culture. Did you hear about Hellenistic? You heard no. about the definition no. Hellenistic? No. Not really. Bactria? You heard about Bactria? No. no. You heard about Alexander the Great? Yes. Okay, well, well we get there. <laughs> okay, we start from there. <laughs> okay. Alexander the Great tried to, because he was conquering everything, you know, going around and conquering. conquering. And now someone told him, hey, look, hey, India is there, why don't you go and conquer there? Okay, so Alexander with all this army, they, you know, they got to India and uh, they were stopped. They were shocked because the Indian civilization at that time was still m much uh, more uh, developed than uh, all the other cultures around. It was already Kali Yuga, advanced Kali Yuga, but still there were more Brahmanas, there were more Kshatriyas, you know, so Alexander was stopped, and uh, instead of trying to conquer India, he got some books. <laughs> you know, so he got some books. He brought the books back to um, to his house, brought that home, and the books that he got were the beginning of the famous Library of Alexandria. You heard about Alexandria of Egypt? Maybe. No. Uh, the Library of Alexandria. You heard about that? No. No, no. Uh, this is interesting. So the Library of Alexandria was the um, Alexander was the greatest city uh, in the ancient times uh, in Europe. It was in Egypt. Egypt was part of Europe, practically speaking. It became part of the Roman Empire later on. Um, and it was the, the lar largest city in the ancient world. Uh, its uh, university and library had uh, uh, more than 8 lakh books. There was a, a rule in the city that um, any ship that came to the port, to the harbor, the port of Alexandria, 
any traveler, any caravan that was uh, getting into the city had to declare if they were carrying any books. If they had any books, they had to deliver them to the university and uh, the university would make a copy, uh, keep the original and give them a copy. So you can imagine it went on for centuries, you know, at least uh, uh, four centuries. So there was a lot, there were lots of books. And the books started from, from, uh, from India. So uh, in Alexandria, there was, the, 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 there was a development of a culture that was called Hellenistic because it was a fusion between the ancient Greek culture and the Indian culture. And uh, when uh, Alexandria of Egypt uh, was uh, uh, conquered, you know, by the, the Roman Empire, so lost uh, a lot of power and a lot of books also in various, you know, various uh, stages, um, the Hellenistic culture was established mostly in the region that was called Bactria, that is uh, modern uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, part of Iran. That was called Bactria. And uh, there were a lot of Buddhists and there was a lot of also uh, many universities. So this idea of the uh, spirit, the transcendence, the Brahman, the uh, tat that was covered by the waters of the Mahatattva is found in the beginning of the Genesis of the Bible and in the beginning of the Gospel of John that were written in that period. So uh, around, uh, around that period they were written in Alexandria of Egypt because they were written in Greek. Alexandria was founded by the su successor of uh, Alexander the Great, uh, specifically by Ptolemy, Ptolemy uh, who was a Greek. So the official language of Egypt became the Greek you know, especially of the University of Alexandria. Everybody was speaking Greek. So we know that in Palestine, in Israel, nobody could speak Greek. They actually, they didn't like it. So the fact that uh, the, the Gospels were written in Greek and uh, the Septuaginta version of the Old Testament was also written in Greek, it means they were written in Alexandria of Egypt. And it is recognized. Uh, basically, they say that in the beginning of creation, nothing was there, just the Spirit of God, which is the Brahman, Brahman and uh, the waters, which is the Mahatattva, which is the same, the cosmic water. Okay, let's go the uh, second verse. Namritya rasid amritam natahi naratriya anna asid praketa asid praketa anidavatam swadhyata dekam tasmadhyanam naparakim chanasa. There was neither death nor immortality because, of course, there was no material creation. So, no immortality, Amritam, because in order to calculate immortality, you have to define it by the absence of death. If you don't have the concept of death, you cannot have the concept of immortality, because immortal is something that has been manifested, and it is not becoming non-manifested again. 
but there must be a manifestation. Is that uh, clear? Yes. Okay. Natalie, okay. there was no fire. Naratriya Ahna Asit. There was no night and no day. Asit Praketa. That is the saying, like in Gita, Krishna is saying, Natad Maskayate Suryo. Natad Basayate Suryo. Nasu Sankho Napa. Right? So there was, in the, in the Dhamma Paraman, that is non manifested beyond the material manifestation, there is no Basayate, Natad Basayate Suryo. Uh, there is no sun, no moon, and no fire. So here, the Tarhi, uh, it is uh, defined as a torch, the light. Night, Ratriya, Hana is the day. Asit, Preketa. Anid, Avatan, Swadhaya, Tadekam, Tasman, Dhanyan. Uh, the one, the Sat, the Tat, the, the, the existence, the Satchit Ananda, the eternal existence, the Brahman, Param Brahman, was breathing without air. One Mahavishnu is uh, lying down, Karana Vlakasha Vishnu is lying in the Karana ocean. The Puranas explain that at every breathing cycle, all the universes emanate from his body. And then there are absorbed again into his body. But that is not a breathing made of air. Is that clear? So Mahavishnu yes. was breathing without air and self-sustaining. He doesn't need anything else because he is the Param Brahman, is the everything that exists. Okay. There was that one then. And there was no other, because Mahavishnu is the sum total, is the source and manifestation of Brahman. One without a second. Omnipresent. Okay. Next, verse 3. Tamasit tamasagurham agrea praketam salilam sarvama aidam sarvama aidam tuchena bhya pihitam Yada Sitta Pasastan Mahina Jayaita Kam. Okay. At the beginning, at first, there was only darkness wrapped in darkness. Tamasit Tamasagunham. This Tama uh, is, of course, is a non manifestation. It's not the Guna. It's not the Guna of Tamas. If the, um, you know that the black color is a sum total of all the colors? Yes. So, we have two different types of black. Two different types of Tama. We have the black of, of Vishnu and Krishna and Kali, which is the black that is the sum total of all the light. It's difficult to understand. <laughs> I, I know, I know. I had this experience, I could see it directly, but it's very difficult to explain what is the uh, darkness, the blackness that radiates light. It's, it, it cannot be the sky, because it, it you know, to the logical intellect, it doesn't make sense. But we can make the experiment. You take all the colors, you, you mix them all together, what you get? Black. You get black. So the white, the white light is the, uh, the, um, the, the, what to say, um, the, the pure manifestation without any color. But the black is the origin of the light, the origin of the Brahma. So Mahavishnu is Tama. Tama Sit Tamasagulham. 
darkness wrapped in darkness. But it is not a material darkness. Uh, all this was only unillumined water. Salilam. Salilam was, again, is the ocean, is the water, is the Karan of the Kashai. You know, the Karan of Dhaka, the Karan of the Kashai is inside the Karan of Dhaka. Okay. Sarvam Aidam. Uh, that one which came to be enclosed in nothing arose at last born of the power of heat. Tapasas, tapas, tapas uh, is the uh, is the heat of uh, focus, concentration. When we speak of focus, you know that focus is also a, an optical um, term definition. If you focus an optical lens, you focus the light on an uh, optical lens, you get the fire. So, focus means fire. This you can also do with the laser. When with the laser instrument you focus the light to one specific small point, you manifest the heat, Agni. Tapas. Tapasas. Uh, can you follow? Yes. <laughs> but you wanted an Asadiya Sutta. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. <laughs> uh, some stupid people, stupid Indologists say that the Vedas and Hittas were the most primitive. You know, they were very primitive. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the you know, the ancient Indians became more clever, so they developed the philosophy. So they came up with, the, you know, came up with the Upanishad, that is the philosophical part. They have no idea what the Veda Sanghitas are. <laughs> the, the Veda Sanghitas, the suktas, the suktas of the, especially the Rig Veda, are so thick with, with meanings. You know, they're so difficult to understand, you know, but everything is there, everything is there. Okay, the one which came to be, it means the manifestation, the avatar, okay, we can call it the avatar, the purusha avatar. You know there are three purusha avatars? Ah, Karananda Kasha Vishnu, Garanda Kasha Vishnu, Kshirda Kasha Vishnu, you heard about that? Yes. The Puranas are explaining that. So you see that the Nasadiya Sutta is telling exactly what the Puranas are saying. It's the same. It's the same version. It's the same version. Okay. So the one which came to be, I mean the, the Karma Nakashai Vishnu Purushavata, enclosed in nothing. It means that there was no other manifestation. Okay arose at last, born of the power of heat. heat. Tapasas, tan, mahina jayatai kam, alone, I kam, jayata ekam. Was manifest, was born, was manifested from the tapasas. Hey, let's go, verse 4. Kama stad agresam avarta tadi. Dikmana so reta pratamam a yadasit. Sato bandum masati ni ravindam. Pridi pratisha kawayomani sha. Oh, nice. <laughs> In the beginning, desire descended on it. Kamas. You have heard about the Kama Gayatri Mantra? Like I have heard about it, but I don't know the mantra. Ah, the Karma Gayatri mantra is the mantra by which, in the especially in the Godia, I don't know much about the other other groups, but the Godia Vaishnavas uh, meditate on Krishna. 
the, it is composed by two mantras, the, 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 uh, the Gopala mantra and the Kama Gayatri mantra. So the Gopala mantra is uh, um, Krim Krishnaya Govindaya Gopijana Valabhaya Swaha and Krim we know that is the Bija mantra of Yoga Maya, Kali, the time manifestation. Then the Kama Gayatri mantra says Krim Krishnaya, uh, Krim Kama Devaya Vidmahe uh, Pushpavanaya Dhimahi Tano Nanga Prachodayat. So we meditate on Krishna as Kandarpa, Kamadeva, Vidmahe. We meditate, we know, we, we, um, uh, we recognize, we, we, we know, Vidmahe, we know. Uh, 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 Pushpamanaya Dhimahi. I meditate on uh, he who carries the bow with arrows made of flowers. Uh, the, the arrows of Kama, Kamadeva, are made of flowers. Pushpa, Banaya, Dhimai. Tano Ananga, Prachodaya. May Ananga, Kamadeva, Kandarpa, inspire us. So Krishna is Kama. Inter very interesting. And in fact, Bhagavad Gita is also saying Kama's name, Pratashaba. Uh, dharma Viruddha Bhuteshu Kamo Smi Pratashapa. Right? So, <laughs> in the so, beginning, Kamas, Tadagre, in the beginning, uh, some Avarta Tadhi, Avarta, Avarta Ta, Avarta Ta is the same like Avatar, right? The, the same root. Avarta Ta, descended. Uh, in the beginning, Kama descended in, 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 on it. Adi means in the beginning. Agre first. Manasoreta. The, it is the seed, Reta. Reta is the seed. That is made of mind, Manaso. It's, it's not, you know, physical sperm. It's a seed made of mind born of the mind, the primal seed, Manasoreta, Pratamam, at first, prime, the, the, the first, the original, mm. Yadasit, there was, Sato Bandhum, Asatine Ravindam Ridi, Satisha, Kavayo Manisha, Kavayo, the sages, the, the, the learned people, people who have knowledge, who have searched their hearts with wisdom. This means that everything exists inside, within our heart, our consciousness. Okay. Know that which is kin to that which is not. <laughs> Sato bandhum asati nir avindam. Okay, which is um, bandhum means, akin means uh, related, connected, um, tied in a sense. Bandha, uh, raksha bandha, you know, this when you, when you tie the raki, uh, means tied. Sato bandhum asati. Uh, it is connected, is it? It is tied to that which is not. It means that is not manifested, but is actually existing. Is not, but it is not not. <laughs> you 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 still follow? Huh? You get? Yeah, trying to follow. Yeah, it's a, it's it's really something. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Before I had another meeting, uh, uh, you know, starting to read the Brahma Sanghita, uh, it's uh, more or less the same level. You know, it's 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 very it's very full of meanings. You know, we need to know the ABC. This is why this is why the the Veda Sanghitas are 
not uh, meant to people who don't have a, a sufficient knowledge, sufficient realization, because what they will understand? They will think that, yeah, nobody knows how the war started. Yeah, that's all they come up, you know, <laughs> they come up with. Uh, not exactly. Okay, now we are talking about the Kavi Manisha. Okay. Next, verse 5. Interesting. Okay. Oh, Tiras, Chino, Vitatoros, Mirasamadha. They have stretched their cord across the void. Ah, okay. What is the cord here? What is the cord? The cord is a symbol of measurement. You know, the point is that we, as human, be as human beings, we try to measure with our intellect. You know, these Kavis who have the knowledge, who are trying to transmit the knowledge, they have stretched their measurement across the void, this apparent nothingness, because it's not manifested. And they know what was above and what was below. So, they know, uh, the, the Kavis, they know the Prakriti and the Purusha. The Purusha is above and the, the Prakriti is below. Is, 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 uh, but they're not, there is no uh, above and no below, in fact, because they're all one. You cannot separate the Prakriti from the Purusha. Okay. Reto Dha Asan Mahimana. Seminal powers made fertile mighty forces. Below was strength and over it was impulse. So, this seminal powers is the Bija is the beginning of the manifestation. When we are chanting the Bija Mantra, the Bija is the beginning of the manifestation, is a seed of manifestation of the spiritual form that we meditate on. I is that clear? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. So, because it's difficult made fertile mighty forces what are these mighty forces they're the shaktis which is one shakti only but uh, it manifests in different forms like we know we have the jnana shakti the icha shakti the kriya shakti it's all the adi shakti it's all the mahamaya but it manifests in three forms and it also manifests as Kali, Lakshmi, and Saraswati. All these seminal powers are the Bija that awaken the Shaktis. Because without this Bija, the Shaktis were dormant, Nidra. So the Bija awakens the Shaktis so this seminal power made fertile mighty forces, these shaktis. Mm. Below was strength and over it was impulse. Below, what is the strength? The strength is a shakti. Again, shakti means power. Power means strength. So below, that, what, that which is supporting is the shakti. We can say below, but it is not... Uh, 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 what to say um, a relative position but over it was the impulse the impulse is the purusha purusha is the, 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 the perception impulse perception and impulse 
are practically the same. They're very strictly connected. We can describe the perception as impulse and the impulse as perception. So the Sat Chit Ananda, we know that the Supreme Brahman is Sat Chit Ananda Vigraha. The Vigraha is supplied by the Shakti. While the, uh, the, the Purusha is Sat Chit Ananda, is per perception. Perception and the impulse to action. You remember Krishna and Gita is saying Ahankara uh, Vimudhatma Karta Hamiti Manyate. The, the, the confused uh, uh, Atman thinks that he is performing the action. But in, in fact, all the actions are performed, are, are uh, uh, manifested by the material nature, by the Shakti. So, the Shakti is the strength. And the Atman Brahman is the impulse, the perception, the act, the, the choice, the beginning, the seed of the action. I don't know. You, you are getting this? Yes. Good. Yeah, slightly. I, I'm impressed. <laughs> okay. Six. no, it, something is wrong with the transliteration. You see here? Abba, I yeah. got it. Abba. Bu. Abba, bu. Yeah. Abba, buva. Buva, yeah. Abba, Abba buva. buva. This abab, I think, uh, mm, so <laughs> problem yeah. of transliteration, something is missing. Yeah, it happens. It, I make mistakes. I, I, you know. We are human beings, we make mistakes. Kwadha Veda Kaiha Pra Vochat. Yeah, everything is is Vochat uh, Kuta Ajata Kuta Kuta. Okay. This is a, a, a long U, a long U even. Bhuva, <laughs> Bhuva, Bhuva. Okay, anyway. Let's see the translation. But after all, who knows and who can say whence it all came and how creation happened? The gods themselves are later than creation. So who knows truly whence it has arise, arisen? Okay, this is the verse that is usually confusing for lots of people. Because it seems to say that nobody can know. Nobody knows, nobody can know. In a sense, it is a fact. Because it is this understanding, this realization is beyond the material mind and material intellect. It's a non-manifested. Who can describe the non-manifested? It's not possible. Who can see the beginning of the non-manifested, and of course there is no beginning. Now, Mahavishnu is still uh, not known by anybody else, anyone else. It's one without a second. He is the only one who knows himself. There is no one else. Okay, is that clear? What is the meaning? What is the meaning? Yes. Good. Next, seven. Iyam vishishti yata ababhuva. Okay, now we get the ababhuva. Yadi va dadhe yadi vana. Yavasa dhyaksha parame vyoman. So angaveda vadi yadi va naveda. Okay. 
the do, uh, from where all the creation had it, its origin, Yam Vishristi, the, the, the creation. Yata Ababuva, there started, begin, begin to exist. Uh, whether he fashioned it or whether he did not. Because, it, it, you know, Mahavishnu creates all the worlds, but at the same time, he does not create them. Because they just emanate from his existence. We, you know, we, we don't see a, a, a god that is playing with mud and making the dolls, and, you know, like, like in the Bible, which is, you know, pretty <laughs> childish as a, you know, as an image. He who surveys it all from highest heaven. It's not exactly highest heaven here. You know, the part of Yoma is the supreme space, the supreme dimension, you know. So, Angaveda Yadiva Naveda. Uh, he knows, or maybe even, even he does not know. Uh, so, Anga Veda Yadiva Naveda. He know, because the process of knowing, this is the trick. The process of knowing is a dualistic process. Because it implies the knower, the known, and the act of knowing. There is a distinction between the knower and the known, between the kshetra and the kshetra gya. But at that point, when there is no material manifestation yet, there is no duality. There is no separation and distinction between the Kshetra and the Kshetra Gya, because they are one and the same. Uh, can you get, can you see it? You can get the Yes. Okay. Yeah. Then. Done. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, this was a Nasadi Sukta. <laughs> Any comment? Uh, this last uh, verse. So, I was like, you know, listening to some uh, something, and there they were interpreting it as like, you know, the rishis accept that, like, you know, this is something unknown beyond explanation and all that. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. They didn't exactly. talk about duality. Yeah. But you see, it's beyond so, explanation, it's, uh, beyond material understanding, but still, this thought. This Param Brahman is cheat. It's consciousness, awareness, in a sense, knowledge. So it's knowledge itself, I himself, herself. So so how it it is possible that he doesn't know? He doesn't know because there is no separation from the the knower, the known, and the knowledge. It's, it's just like in the beginning it was saying there is no existence and there is no n n there is not no existence it's the same he knows and maybe even he does not know it doesn't mean that God is stupid or ignorant because God is existence itself is knowledge is awareness itself how does not does not know? You you see you see the the uh, apparent contradiction. You know, but we can resolve this contradiction if we understand you know the, the logic that um, when there is one without a second when there is omnipresence, there is nothing to know. Because knowledge itself, knowledge itself. There is no object. It's all subject. <laughs> or there is no subject, it's all object. You know, the, wherever you take it, 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 it 
infinite unlimited doesn't have a beginning or an end. So whichever way you take it, it's all the same. You know, that doesn't have extremities. I don't know, is, is this clear? It's clear. Yes, yes. Fantastic. So with this we can all get like, you know, Puranas are commentary and easily explaining Vedas only. Yeah, like yeah, some the people Puranas, say that yeah, the Puranas are more descriptive. Mm. You know, like, like a dynamic a story. You know, the, the, the Puranas are written for the Shudras. <laughs> You know, because the Shudras cannot understand this stuff. You know, they, they don't have the, 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 the you know, the, the capacity to understand philosophy, theology, logic. They just understand the story, you know. So it remains in their mind as a story until the time, maybe after a number of lifetimes, you know, when they actually, you know, connect uh, the, the dots, you know, they understand, they realize. But this is beyond the, the material mind. We know, you know, the way they are telling that. Now, this is beyond the material mind. Okay. So, we had our hour, we read the Nasadiya Sutta. If you want to continue uh, with more elaboration, we can, uh, uh, we can do next time. Yes. Probably. Thank you. Please write down. But yeah, I think we covered in it. It's, huh? it's more or less understandable whatever we discussed so yeah yeah we got the yeah, yeah. the first reading this is written the, from the like you know platform of oneness and here we are in duality it's exactly, hard for us to exactly. and if you read again if we read Bhagavad Gita see how many times Krishna says that we have to overcome the illusion of duality then we can understand the Nasadiya Sutta. If we are still attached to duality, to material identification, material attachments, limitations, time, space, and individuality, it, it is going to, to create problems to, to the mind. So, mind will become confused. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank Next you. Time. Thanks for the explanation. Jai, Jai Jagannath. Radhe Radhe. Jai Jagannath. Radhe Radhe.